Hey, good morning. How you doing? You doing all right? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. I love Mondays. Monday's kind of a down day for me because we're just coming off of Sunday and Sunday we had such a wonderful, wonderful service and uh, uh, some friends, people who were part of our church for so long uh, and moved to Colorado to for a job, for a wonderful job actually, <clears throat> are back here on vacation. And so they came over last night and we played cards and ate pizza and hooted and hollered and ate ice cream and just had a great time. It was just so good to see them. It's always good to see see friends. Amen. It's like one of, one of the Bob Seger songs. He says that seeing old friends is good for the soul. Good for, It's good for your soul, good for your spirit to see people. Good godly people. Good godly people. And it's just so good to see them. Hey, I want to talk to you today about how curses get started. How curses get started. You know, there's 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 not enough taught in the churches today about curses. Yet curses run rampant among God's people. Of course, you know, curses are, are all over. God's people are not the only ones that have curses involved in their life. Amen. But boy, I'll tell you, they do. They do. And, and it's it's just off of curses ravage God's people. I want to take you back to Genesis, how the very first curse got started. Now, we're going to talk about this this week because I'm telling you what, if you understand this and you know how to deal with this and you know how to keep these curses and, and things like this, and you keep this, what I call this crap out of your life, I'm telling you what, you cannot be anything but successful and healthy if you know how to keep this stuff out of your life. This is huge. This is huge. This is the reason so many of God's people are sick and broke. The reason so many of God's people are sick and broke is because of this. Is because of these curses. Curses and generational curses and and, and it's just, it's running wild and nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. You know, it's like Mary and I uh, were talking the other day. We were, we were watching one of Brother Hagen's old YouTube uh, videos. We, we watch the YouTube quite a bit. And we watch, what we watch on there is the old preachers. Brother Hagen, A. A. Allen, Teal Osborne, uh, Oral Roberts. We we watched the people who really not just taught faith but operated in faith. There's a difference. There's a difference. A lot of people are out there teaching faith today, but I'll tell you who's operating in faith. Amen. A lot of people in these Bible schools are teaching faith. But there's very few people who are actually operating in faith. Brother Hagen operated in faith. Oral Roberts operated in faith. Amen. And there's very few people today who are truly operating in faith. But there's some. There's some. I want to talk to you right now about curses and how they get started. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 17. God says to, to Adam, he says, And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree that I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground because of you. In sorrow, in sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. The word sorrow means toil, hard work. Cursed is the ground. Now, Adam was sent out of the garden to make a living in cursed ground. Cursed ground. That's, 
That's a tough way to make a living, folks. That's a hard life. But he gave up the good life when he sinned against God. He invited the curse in. He invited the curse in. Now, I want to say something about curses right now. Curses cannot come into your life uninvited. I want you to write this down and, and put it up around your house. Curses cannot come into your life uninvited. And I'm going to write that down too because the Lord just gave it to me. Curses cannot come into your life uninvited. Uninvited. Curses cannot just come. Curses cannot just land. The devil cannot just attack you. Please. This is huge to understand that the devil cannot just attack you. <clears throat> no, you're redeemed. You're redeemed. How do I know the devil cannot just attack you? Am I just making a statement? No, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in Genesis or in uh, Job chapter 1. That's right before Psalm. Job chapter 1. Look at this. The devil is wanting to get at Job. He wants to get at Job. And uh, the devil answered the Lord in verse 9. It says, does Job fear you for nothing? Haven't you made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou has blessed the work of his hand and his substance is increased in the land. I'm telling you what, people, if you are blessed of God, the devil cannot touch you. He can't touch you. He cannot just pick out people to attack. He cannot pick out people to curse. He can, a curse without cause does not light. People cannot curse you. I get so many phone calls from people saying, oh, Pastor Jim, those people are practice, practicing witchcraft and they spoke in curses over me. I tell you what, they, they might as well be spitting on, into the wind for all the good it's going to do them. Amen. People walking around, people dancing around in the woods, doing witchcraft and Satanism stuff, have no power to curse you. They cannot curse you. I hope we're straight on that. They can't. They have no authority to curse you. The words they speak against you are totally impotent. Totally impotent. Amen. Totally impotent. They can't harm you. They can't touch you. They can't do you any they can't do nothing bad to you. They cannot cause bad things to happen in your life. And if you're afraid of these people, your fear is not justified. Not justified. It's, it's like it's like Hulk Hogan being afraid physically of a child. Why would he be afraid of a child? A child doesn't have the power to hurt him. He, he, he can stand in the ring. You can put a child in the ring. Is he going to be afraid of that child? No, the child has no power to to harm him, to hurt him. The, the, the child is not going to body slam him like they do in wrestling. Now, I know it's all a show. I understand that. I'm using this as an example. That's how these people are with you. They can't touch you. Now, I want you to see something here. In Job, 
We're gonna we're gonna we're starting on this today, and I want you to stay with me this week. We're gonna talk about this. Because once you're able to deal with this, once you're able to keep this crap out of your life, I'm telling you what, you will be nothing but successful and healthy. Because this is the cause of all sickness. This is the cause of all lack and all poverty. Are these curses? We're going to get rid of them. We're going to get rid of them for you. Now look at this. Job says, does God fear you for nothing? Haven't you put a wall around him? Brother Copeland calls that the blessing wall. It's a wall. I call it the wall of redemption. The wall of redemption is around every believer. The devil can't get through it. He can't go over it. He can't dig underneath it. But there's a door. There's a door. Every wall has a door. There's a, there's a door. The Vatican. The Pope, the Pope says, we should not build walls. We should build bridges. But he lives behind a 50-foot wall himself. I say, tear down your wall. Then we'll talk. Amen. Now, his wall, of course, has doors in it. So he can get in and out. And so his, his people can get in and out. Every wall has to have a door. Every fort has to have a door. In, in, in the, back in the 1700s, the settlers used to build forts. That's where Pittsburgh came from. Fort Pitt. William Pitt built a fort where Pittsburgh is called Fort Pitt. It was a fort. And it was, they would build it out of these great big logs and they'd build it like in a circle or in a square and they'd put platforms up there where they could stand there and shoot and protect themselves and it would be like 20 or 30 feet high. Huh? That's, that's, that's a wall, but it had doors in it. The wall of redemption has a door in it. Amen? Now, the devil says to God, he says, you put a wall around Job, I can't touch him. But you see that because of fear, God gave the devil permission to get at Job. I'm telling you what, people. The devil cannot pick out people to attack. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on this. We're going to study this out. We're going to study this out. You are going to get to the point, I'm telling you what, within the next week or two, where the devil absolutely has no influence in your life at all. None. Zero. And I will help you with that. I will help you with that. We're going to talk about the key to keeping this out, the key to getting rid of this stuff, the key to living a cursed free life. Glory to God. Huh? To live a cursed free life. But we got to talk about how these curses start, and that's where we're going to work on this. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, help us send this message around the world. <clears throat> when you donate to this ministry, you become a partner with this ministry. All the partners of this ministry have access to me. You can call me anytime. I will, until you get to the point where you can do this yourself, I will keep the curses out of your life. Because I have the authority to do that with my partners. Amen. And the people who, who give offerings to this ministry, then then you can, I'll show you the Bible where the those ministers have the authority to do that. I can keep the devil out of your life. I can keep the curses out of your life. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, go to increasenow.com. Give us a call. We will help you with this. We will get you started. Make it a great day. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills.